Crazy Face van Krit. Right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Getting to Know the Detectorist. And as you can see, this gentleman needs no introduction. Mr. Supra Drew from Ohio, USA. Supra Drew, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Well, I am very glad to finally be able to do this, David. Thank you very much. Man, this is great meeting you sort of in the flesh at last. I've seen your chats with... Uh, uh, Paul W., that one was funny. What was that mm -hmm. restaurant called again? I can't remember. Well, the first one we went to was called White Castle. White Castle, that's the one. That's the one I, I, yeah. I was uh, really intrigued about. What was that little uh, burger you ate? Well, what they do is they take the hamburger and they make it pretty small and mm -hmm. square. And they cook it on a bed of water and onions and they steam the burger. Okay. So the burger's very, very moist and very oniony. Then they put a pickle and a little bit of mustard on top. Yeah, but it's so small, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I like big stuff, something substantial. Does that well, really? So you, so, you, so you eat fifteen or twenty of them. <laughs> okay, well that would work for me as well. Now, right off the bat, I want to ask you about metal detecting tonight. But uh, we all know that you're kind of a hybrid hobbyist. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on metal detecting for now. We'll get to the other hobbies uh, at a later stage. When did this whole thing start for you? Where, what, what made you decide to buy a metal detector and get out there with the shovel? Well, I guess it all started uh, probably November of 2012 when I started watching some videos on YouTube. And the first detectorist that I really, really started following was Deep Digger Dan. And he was so funny and so easy to follow. And I kind of got hooked at that point. And that's when I started really branching out and finding other channels to subscribe to. Um, you know, I started watching uh, Chuck and Dave. They are uh, they're really good metal detectors. They're over in uh, New Jersey, locked and loaded is what their channel is called, Locked and Loaded. And and those guys, they really helped me out a lot. They really did. And then a few months later, one of the other guys was selling his metal detector because he upgraded and I bought it. Oh. And that's when it started, yeah. You've you've bought your detector, a second-hand detector. You didn't mention what brand it was. What what type of detector was it? I have a Garris, Garrett Ace 250. Classic. That thing yeah. is... Uh, like the Corolla, Toyota Corolla, just it just mm -hmm. does everything it needs to do. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, so okay, so you bought your machine in 2012. Um, so that's not too long ago, but hey, you've been busy for over, well, almost we're going on two years now. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite find so far? Oh, that's easy. That's very easy. Mm. Uh, one day last fall, working out in my own backyard. And uh, I got a really good low tone. And, you know, at this point, I don't really know enough about the tones to be able to read them. So I was watching the display. Right. And it said it was about six inches down. So I went ahead and got down and started digging. And this is what I found. So that was your fi oh, so it's a front end loader. Oh, with a little yep. driver there as well. Yep. And it's made by Lesney in England in 1960. Oh, fantastic. And all that time underground, and the digger still works. Well, it looks, it looks like it's got some damage on its real, uh, rear axle. Yeah, the uh, axles are shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. We need some balancing done on that one. Oh, that's an awesome find. That's great. And I guess... I I guess the uh, the other the other big find, and uh, you know a lot of people find these, but this is the first one I ever found. I found a square nail. I don't have a problem with square nails. I love finding I, them. 
You know, I, I complain about it sometimes in my videos, but not really. I, I, I always mention that I like finding square nails because it's a great indicator uh, or indication of the age of the area that you're detecting. Mm -hmm. So I've got no problem with finding square nails. Actually, I keep all of them. Good, good, good. This, this area that we're in right now where my house is built mm -hmm. used to be a giant orchard back oh. in the mid-1800s. So this could have been where the barns or maybe stables were located. The house that sat on the property that the person that owned the orchard is like a block away from me. Is it still standing or uh, has the original so house been? The carriage house is still standing and it's been converted into a private home. Right. But unfortunately about uh, 1974, 75, they tore the house down because it was just, I mean, it was really starting to show its age and right, starting to right. have some wear and they tore it down and built a, an ugly brown monstrosity. <laughs> it's a pity you can't, uh, well, will you be able to get permission to detect that area? You know, I've asked the guy who lives right next door, and that used to be part of the property of that main house. Right. And he's 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 willing to let me detect, yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, remember I was telling you about the uh, train station? Mm -hmm. I did oh, get yes. a picture of that old train station. Yes, you know, I remember, I remember, yeah. So I, you... do, I do have the picture finally. Uh, because at that stage or at this stage, it's quite overgrown. True. You look, you're staring up over my head all the time. What's going on? Um, I've got a little group supporting me on <laughs> Facebook right now. Some friends. Uh, I had mentioned on Facebook that I was getting ready to do my interview with you. Right, right. And okay. I've gotten some words of support from a couple guys. Hey, please share, uh, please. Okay, Dave, Dave Jeffries from uh, Locked and Loaded Metal Detecting, John Webb, who is otherwise known as the John 316 UK, oh, yeah. and a, a, a YouTuber who hasn't been on much lately by the name of Rolling Stone Zero, my friend Raul. They've all put up words of encouragement for me. Well, do you want to share the messages? Well, let's see. Dave says, uh, he says, I'll do just fine as long as I remember to give him a shout out. <laughs> you need John to Webb your says, just enjoy it, buddy. <laughs> uh, Derek Maloney says, chill, we're all digging for you. <laughs> and Rolling Stone Zero says that he can't wait to see the interview. Oh, man, that's, that's fantastic. Guys, you can't help but subscribe to this gentleman. Look at the quality, uh, top, uh, the quality shout outs he does. Uh, Drew, you are famous for it, and you don't even know it. Your way of doing shout-outs is legendary. <laughs> Thank you. Now, to get back to the original story, um, as I said, I visited a local train station, and you mentioned on uh, bobsdigner.com that mm -hmm. uh, you were planning to visit your, uh, or you are aware of an old train station in your local area as well, and uh, mm -hmm. you're looking for a picture. So... Uh, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'll display the picture that you found on this video. I'll just do a little slide in so that people can see. Great. What would you say is the item that you would really like to find? You know, I've given that a lot of thought. And I'd have to say at this point, what I would really like to find are mercury dimes. I've never found a mercury dime before. Uh, you were if you were talking about the mercury dime. It's silver, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Uh, mm -hmm. That is an. Uh, that's with the bust looking to the left. If I'm not. Yeah, yeah. What what yeah, is that yeah. face? Is a uh, what is that the Libert, uh, statue of liberty? Well, <clears throat> they. Uh, I believe the actual term for the dime is the liberty dime, but people call it the mercury dime because that's who's on the on the the obverse is mercury. The God Mercury. Ah, okay, okay. Now I understand. So, you've been detecting for about two years now. You haven't found one yet. What type of areas do you <clears throat> focus on when you go hunting? Well, I have uh, a couple tot lots that I, I like to go to, mm -hmm. and they're pretty popular. So, um, 
you know, whenever I notice that they've been a lot of people there, like the day before, I'll try to go the very early the next morning. And so far, all I've been able to find are some pennies and, you know, trinkets, things like that. Haven't found any big money yet. Uh, and besides that, the only other place I've done um, is my yard, my, my own yard. I have two permissions that I've been saving. Right. And the reason why is because I'm planning to invite some people from my region to come to Columbus for a group hunt in the summer. Oh, man. Keep the camera batteries charged. Oh, I've yeah. You know what, that. Well, <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, I've got, I've got two, two permissions that I'm saving, like, like I said. And they're both in old parts of the city. So I have my fingers crossed. Uh, that, that will make some fantastic footage, I'm sure. I'm really looking forward to that. I hope that happens. Great stuff. Me, me too. Right. Uh, Drew, you also, uh, like I called you earlier, you're a hybrid hobbyist. Now, mm -hmm. I've, I've really got to know you by watching your coin roll hunt videos. Now I understand you guys had a terrible winter and uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to go outside due to the winter and the snow and the cold, cold weather. So you keep yourself busy doing coin roll hunting. Now tell us about that. When did this thing, this coin roll hunting thing start? Is that an old thing or is it something that just passed the time during the winter time? Oh, th this is a very old thing. I've I've been doing coin roll hunting since I was probably six years old. My grandmother actually got me into it. She had some uh, penny books, oh. and uh, we, when I would go visit her in the summertime, we would do some some penny penny roll hunting. And when she passed away, I got her old books. Oh man! And these these. These are our cherished, cherished possessions to me. Oh, that, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm speechless. Uh, now, the wheat penny, if I could just mm -hmm. uh, ask you about a one specific coin. People are actually, they like the wheat penny and the V uh, Well, it's not the V. Is it the V penny or V nickel? Well, there's the V nickel. V nickel. But the penny, the Abram Lincoln bust on the on the reverse mm -hmm. and then you've got the wheat why is the wheat penny so special to people well you know what that's an interesting question i think it has a lot to do with nostalgia mm -hmm. the fact that they're copper and the, the pennies we have nowadays aren't copper they're they're uh, copper clad over zinc cores right now we do have the memorial penny which is a copper penny but uh, they're just, they just don't seem to be as popular as the wheat pennies. And I think part of it could also be because they don't make the wheat pennies anymore. And they're just, they're just not out there. And, and to, to find one is, is, is pretty exciting. Have you tried... Um, okay, I don't know if... I've been finding copper coins in fields. And I haven't been looking for coins at all. I, I go for war relics. Um, but I've accidentally found a few copper coins and mm. I've been having real trouble cleaning them properly. Uh, so scrubbing them with a, this one old coin, this 1926 penny uh, that I've been scrubbing with a toothbrush uh, mm. and water, it started breaking the sides off. So I, I, I was really angry about that. I was too aggressive cleaning it. Do you have advice for people to, cl uh, to clean copper coins? Normal patina, well, normal uh, mud, you know, this, instead of using a brush. Well, there are a couple different methods that I will use. Um, there's electrolysis, which is pretty invasive. You can really tear up a coin pretty, pretty easily. Okay. Um, another, another method, you could boil it in peroxide. You can soak them in vinegar. Um, and another method you can use, if you really don't care about actually damaging the patina on a coin, you can use copper polish. And you would be amazed at how well copper polish works. Isn't that abrasive? A little no, bit abrasive. No, actually, it's not abrasive. It, it, uses a little bit of a, it uses a little bit of a chemical to break down the, ah. the corrosion of the patina. Uh, um, recently, you did a mega shout-out. Yes. And... Uh, 
I've never seen something like that before. You know, we're all familiar with shout-out videos. Um, it's a great way of showing support to your fellow detectorists. But uh, the one you've done is, is incredible. Especially Thank you. the way you pronounce, or not pronounce, uh, try to imitate my accent, if I can put it that <laughs> way. Um, now, listening to me as uh, a South African and you being used to, to your way of saying things, how would you imitate my accent? Would you be able to say a phrase or a sentence in a South African accent? <laughs> well, I tell you what, when, when, I, when I hear your voice and I think about your accent, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else hears this, but what I hear is a little British and a little New Zealand. Okay. So it sounds kind of like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so you broke up there. Repeat that phrase, please. It sounds like you said South Africa. Well, I guess. Uh, oh, it's 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 tough. It's tough when you've been trained your whole life to speak in a monotone voice mm -hmm. to do accents. You know, um, being from a, a radio family as I am, I've always had people in my family speak the way I speak, and to then try to throw out some kind of accent is a little bit difficult <laughs> if you know what i'm trying to say yeah actually it, i i recognize that mm -hmm. earlier you mentioned that you would really like to find a mercury dime mm -hmm. and i'm sure actually i know you've done a little bit of a congratulational is that the right word to use uh, a video of congratulations to Mr. Bob from Bob's Digging It mm -hmm. for finding probably the most amazing copper coin you can think of in the most spectacular condition. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll agree with me that uh, two cent coin of Bob is a real, really great treasure. Yeah, that's absolutely the find of a lifetime. Um, I would I would really rank that up with um, maybe not in monetary value, but in equivalency of finding like a gold doubloon. I mean, they're so rare. I mean, there are guys out there that find them, but but you know, this is a this is literally a find of a lifetime for Bob, and I couldn't be more excited. Now, if you don't mind uh, mind me hijacking the video, I'm going to put a link into this section of the video pointing you guys to the video where Bob found this uh, coin. Also, uh, Drew has been so kind enough to donate a picture of the coin, which I'll slide in somewhere during this clip as well. Bob, congratulations from both me and Drew. That's a fantastic find. Now, Drew, if we can get back to the metal detecting of... Uh, the, let's get back to you. Um, you've said that you uh, we've discussed your... First, or your favorite find, we've discussed what you really like to find. We haven't really talked about your kit. Uh, we know you're using a Garrett Ace 250. Have you got anything else apart from the metal detector, like a pinpointer or special shovel? Well, i tell you what. I would love to get a Pro Pointer, a Garrett Pro Pointer. Mm -hmm. That's on my list. Um, I plan on trying to get one this summer. Um, I use a Wicked Digger ah. made by NH Treasure Hunter. And wicked is the word. It really is. I was using a, just a regular garden trowel, mm -hmm. and I was fight, you know, fighting it, trying to you know, get it to, to work into the soil. I got this wicked digger. I went to put it in the soil, and I about fell over. It went in so easy. <laughs> I, this I interview is full of endorsements. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you'll... Uh, well, NH Treasure Hunter. I'll put a link into the video as well, especially from, from you. Uh, uh, yeah, crap. glowing endorsement from Super Drew. Th that's <laughs> what I wanted to say. Thank you very much there for supporting me. Now, um, the areas that you detect, we've kind of discussed that. You, you generally uh, focus on 
your backyard or your uh, immediate location, maybe uh, you don't visit parks that much. Well, I go to uh, a couple parks, but I, I focus on the uh, playgrounds. The uh, parks in, in the city that I live in, they really don't want you digging. Ah, of course. They, they said it's okay if you swing the coil and go for surface finds. But if they find a hole, they'll, they'll complain. No, I can understand that. A couple of detectorists had uh, issues li recently. Uh, uh, the Junk Junkie made a video about it, as well as Tulsa Pull Tab Finder. Mm -hmm. Those are two ones that uh, pop into my mind about uh, park incidents, people complaining yeah. about it and have they, them having problems with it. Now, um, you've been on YouTube for quite a while. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to upload your hunting videos? That includes your coin roll hunting, your shout outs. Why did you want to uh, become a uh, part of this community? Well, for the first couple of years, I was just watching videos. And uh, some of the channels really inspired me to give it a shot. But I didn't have a video camera. So I really, I really couldn't, uh, I really couldn't, uh, you know, shoot any videos. And then one day when I was out actually taking pictures, I noticed my camera had a video feature. I had no idea. <laughs> so that's, that's how that got started. And when I shot my first video, it was just a simple little 30 second, you know, just to see how it worked video. Right. And with each successive video, I got a little bit better and a little bit more intrigued by the whole thing. And at some point, I, I got I got to the point where my, I was I, my camera wasn't good enough. I was trying to do shots that my camera just wouldn't wouldn't do. That's when I had to upgrade, and that's when I got the Avario, and it's just opened up a whole new world. Well, it was a, a, a item that had a little bit of a learning curve as well, if I remember. Ooh, uh, it video, sure did. A video it or two sure. that uh, you mentioned uh, that you had some difficulty upgrading uh, uploading or changing mm -hmm. drivers or something like that. The problem I was having was that the uh, Avario format that it, it records in is not recognized by the editing software that I use. Ah, okay, I understand. So one of the guys, um, well, as a matter of fact, Wes VB ah. and Paul W. Those two guys helped me out a lot and found a converter program. And I just, you know, I just run it through the converter program, and then I can edit it. Ah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. I asked you earlier um, about your YouTube username, Supra Drew. Now, initially, when I saw your name, I thought you intentionally misspelled it, and it was referring to the word super, like Superman. Why did you choose that name? Give us a little bit of an explanation or a story there. Well, let's see. Back in the year 2000, I drove a Toyota Supra, which I just recently sold. And the car club I was in, there were four guys named Drew. So to cut down on the confusion, I became known as Supra Drew. Right. And when I had my, channel, my opportunity to make my channel, I just went with Supra Drew. Now, um, I think you're still, uh, it's a good thing that you've got the name Super Drew because in the metal detecting or the YouTube community, you've got a coin hunting Drew as well. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of Drews there as well. Plenty yeah. of Daves and Davids. Too uh -huh. many uh, Johns. <laughs> let's stick to that. Oh, le let's leave it at that. Uh, okay. <laughs> you've got a, uh, okay, let's, let's talk about your channel. You've got a large subscriber base. Do you feel mm -hmm. pressure to keep everybody happy in terms of responding to comments or uploading content? Boy, I'm glad you asked me about that. I, I really do. I, I feel I have a responsibility. If somebody is going to sub my channel, watch the videos and comment, I, have, I feel I have a responsibility to reply to that comment honestly and you know with thought. Not just a, hey, thanks for commenting, and, you know, that's it. I like to read the comment and, and really tailor the comment to what they've said. Okay. Uh, I, f I, feel, I, feel what you, I feel the same way. 
Uh, if people take the trouble to watch my video, I really appreciate that. And if they take the extra trouble to comment, I really feel that I need to return the favor because I really appreciate their support. So I understand what you're saying there. You know, but there are some some guys out there that have so many subscribers that it's it's literally impossible for them to reply to every comment. And I'm not quite to that point yet, but it's getting close. It, it's becoming uh, it's becoming a, a daily chore to to sit down and try to work my way through all of them, and I'm I'm pretty far behind at the moment. <laughs> I call it YouTube admin. It's terrible. I'm go. I'm so behind as well. People wanting to upload or thinking about starting a YouTube channel. What type of advice would you give them in terms of uh, lessons that you've learned? What to stay away from? What to avoid? Uh, what to focus on? Well, I guess if, if I was giving advice to somebody who's new, I would say speak clearly and loudly so people can hear you. Because if people can't hear you, they're not going to watch your videos. Secondly, you need to be careful that when you're showing your finds that you hold your hands steady and give people time to look at them. Some of the videos that I see, somebody will show a find and they'll say, hey, look, I found this penny. And you, and you never see the penny. And I guess the, the, the other piece of advice I give to people is just simply this. Be yourself. Don't try to, you know, create a character. Just, just be yourself. Go out there. Talk like you talk to your family. And people will respond. Sticking or talking about advice, what advice would you give to young people or people looking at starting this hobby, metal detecting? That's a good question. I, I think I think there's there's two obvious answers. The first answer would be to invest in a machine that's that's an entry level machine with an easy learning curve. You don't want to go out and get yourself a CTX because it's 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 a very technical machine and you're going to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Start with something simple like a Fisher F2, a Garrett Ace 250, something along those lines. Something that's easy to learn and then. Because you've not made a huge investment, if you don't like the hobby, you haven't lost any. You haven't lost a lot. And if you do like the hobby, then you can upgrade to something better. And I guess the other piece of advice would be get on YouTube and watch videos. Watch how these people do it. You can learn so much from just watching the guys that really know what they're doing. I agree. That's where I got my education from. I keep on looking at myself in, in the display at the bottom of my screen and I, it looks like I've got a shiny forehead. And people, this is because Mr. Supra Drew, he was complaining about the ambient or the ambience that I had before. Like this. I think uh, this has got a brilliant slimming mm -hmm. effect. Um, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I was requested to fetch my little, if I could just show you, a lamp. To give me third degree burns on my retinas. Well, we, we all want to see that handsome face, David. Oh, man, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, I just want to thank you very much for joining me tonight. People, this has been Super Drew. We all know him. We all love him. He's always been supportive of everybody's videos, especially mine. And I want to thank you for that, Super Drew. Guys, oh, you're very you can um, visit Super Drew's channel by clicking on the link in the video description. I'll also put an annotation link on the video itself. He's got videos about metal detecting, coin roll hunting, and even freakier, cooking. And this, we're looking at the grand champion for three years in a, in a row for buffalo chicken wings. Now, I'm not a chicken wing fan. I don't, if I want to eat something like that, I'll it's like eating frog legs. There's, no, there's nothing substantial about a chicken wing. So I will investigate your claim, Mr. Drew. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Oh, I had a great time. Thank you very much. Cheers, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. And as you can see, this gentleman needs... Uh, let me do that again. <laughs> Blooper reel. Gentleman. Right. <laughs> Crazy days. You know, it's <laughs> gotta be in there. People <laughs> finding the Mercury Dime really perform. Let me just.
give me a second. <laughs> oh. Backflip. Um, uh, now I've lost the story. Uh, so Damn. Okay, I have to stop. <laughs> okay, kind of lighting scheme, I would say. <coughs> oh, darn! What was that noise? Okay. Crap. Okay. How long it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I screwed that one up. <laughs> okay, stop trying to keep my face calm, but <laughs> this smile won't leave it. If you can give advice to people wanting to upload content, what type of uh, what type of things that you would uh, would you them? Uh, give me a second there. Blooper <laughs> reel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give it a second. Let me calm down. <laughs> okay. You know, in uh, my country, I've, I I I'm, I'm the champion of staring. Can you do the crazy face? <laughs> oh, I can. I can do the crazy face. No crazy I face over here. Crazy <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna scare people or entertain people. Oh. Now, I, once again, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Donkey dot yellow hockey cat tot scenes. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>